Hello everyone, and may the Lord of love and peace bless you all. Today our topic about why people leave Islam. Now I saw somebody send me uh, a link about uh, videos of people speaking why they left Islam. <clears throat> and some of them are titled that they left Islam because they spoke to me. Now, you know, is it really because they spoke to me or because Islam is a stupid? I think because Islam is a stupid. I'm just a person who deliver information and show people what they cannot see. But the truth is, people are leaving Islam because Islam is a stupid cult. If Islam is not a stupid cult, there is no way those people will leave Islam anyway. And no way you can convince people that they are, you know, they are following the wrong stupid belief. So when you see uh, people calling me life and, you know, decide to leave Islam, as you see in the videos, tons of them, that's not really because a Christian prince, <clears throat> he made them leave Islam. It's because Islam is a stupid. And if Islam is a stupid, I mean, what we can do? Stupidity, I mean, is rejected. And there is no way God we believe in and yet he is a stupid. And there is no way a prophet we follow, yet he is a stupid. So it is not really Christian prince who make those Muslims, you will see tons of videos and copied by you guys, uh, of people leaving Islam live on air, or even people making videos saying, I decided to leave Islam because I spoke to Christian prince. <clears throat> the fact is bigger than this. The fact is, when you follow a stupid cult, especially when you got shocked by information you thought is not there. I received a message in Skype from a Muslim, and I hope he will be the next person to leave Islam. And you know, this is how always things started. They challenged me and then they leave Islam. Not a single person who decide to leave Islam, like I say, most of them, maybe 95% of them, they left Islam after debating me, let us say, a harsh debate, including calling me names. This person, he says to me, that I did lie <clears throat> about the story of Zulqurnayn, which is Alexander the Great. He said that I said uh, the story in the Quran saying that Allah stating that the sun set in a murky water. And he is saying, no, Islamic interpretation shows that this is how it appears in the eyes of this man that the sun set in the murky water. And it's not the Quran saying that the sun setting in murky, murky water. <clears throat> and, you know, just to... Uh, just to show, uh, take his side in this argument, he is not talking to me, so we have to to show why he is saying what he is saying. We will go to the tafsir, and we will read the story from the tafsir, as you see. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan, chapter 18, verse number 86. <clears throat> and here in the tafsir you will see this is a Jalalai saying until he reached the sitting of the sun where it set he found it sitting in a muddy spring Ainun Hamia a spring containing ham or hama sorry which is a black clay 
it is sitting on the spring described as seen from perspective of the eye for otherwise it is far larger than the size of the world and he found it that uh, the spring of uh, uh, like this is how he see it i mean he this is how it appear you need to take to your uh, consideration that Ajalalain is a kind of moderate scholar who explained the Quran. So now it's confirmed to him that this is garbage, cannot be true. If we go and search what year Ajalalain was, exist. Oh, sorry, you guys, you're gonna see the screen. Uh, forgive me for that. Okay, now you see the screen. <coughs> Uh, so do you see here what it says so he's saying well if this is what the Quran is saying why Ajalalain is saying that Ajalalain is a person who came long after Muhammad and now we have science proving that this is garbage so how Ajalalain can be a Muslim defending Islam if you remember my debate with uh, Dr. Rohi from Al Azhar University, he said, uh, you know, the, the tafsir is made to defend, to, to fix a problem, to defend Islam. To fix a problem is not really meant to explain as much as to fix a problem. So when the Muslim scholars they claim something, it's very easy for someone like me to get them busted, even if it's a Jalali. Let us go first to Arabic section in this website, Islamic government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. And let us see Tafsir Ajalalain in Arabic. <clears throat> Ajalalain is exist in the year 864, as you see, of Hijrah. Okay. Add 650 years something to it that's mean that this book is written you know not really long time ago six centuries ago or even less so and that explain why the more the explanation of the Quran The more it's close to our time, the more it is trying to solve problems and to defend, but not to state the truth. But let me show you how I can get a Jalalain busted. Very easy. If we go back to the verse, chapter 18, verse number 86, you will see. And this is the problem, by the way. <clears throat> uh, Muslims don't see, they don't even read. Because if you read, you will see right away. Aren't you Muslims always, they say to us, read the verse before it? Don't you? Don't you Muslims always say to me, don't take things out of context and don't why you are not reading the verse before it or the verse after it so if we read the verse before it it says and here the translation is funny if we go to the same interpretation Ajalalain for the same verse what Ajalalain will say let us read together Chapter 18, verse number 84, this time. So we go back. <clears throat> we change the verse from 86 to 84. Read carefully with me all the Abdul. Indeed, we empowered him, 
throughout the land by facility, uh, etc. And for him, journey and therein, we gave him everything in which might have need a way, a route to lead to which or to that which he sought. Allah, he sponsored this man. Allah, he support this man. Allah, he guided this man. So how this man, he will see the sun sitting in the murky water. If we go back to verse number 86, explain by Ajalalain himself. Look what Ajalalain he said. The Quran saying that he found it sitting in a spring of water. Now, how in the world somebody he can see the sun sitting in a spring of water in the eye perspective? You tell me. You see, when they try to defend, because they are infected by Islam, and the infection don't make them think right. How in the world any human being can see the sun sitting in a spring of murky water? It's not even the ocean. It's not even the sea. It is a spring of muddy water. And he is the one saying to you how it is. The same interpretation saying what he saw. What he saw? He saw the sun sitting in a murky water. At the same time, in the same interpretation, look what he said. He found it sitting. He did not see it. Who is the one is talking saying he found it? It is Allah. So Allah is reporting the find, is not reporting what he saw or he thought. When I say to you, I will tell you what happened to us when we went, uh, you know, two months ago to Texas. And I go and I say, okay, we went to a place where the, the cowboy, they ride the cows. And I found something that is a find, I found. But if Allah is saying, Christian Prince, he found, there's nowhere Allah is going to be mistaken about what the finding is. Do you understand, guys? Are you following with me? Who is the one saying he found it? You see, it cannot be himself speaking here because the Quran says, the Quran says, حتى بلغه مغرب الشمس وجدها. He found it. It's not the guy saying, I found it. It's Allah saying, he found it in the Quran. This is not in the interpretation now. He found it sitting in a murky water. Now, murky water is not an ocean. It's a, it says it clearly, it's a, it's a spring of water. So what do, you, what do you mean from the eye perspective that somebody he saw or he thought the sun is sitting in murky water. That is the most stupid argument ever. Now, to get them more busted, all Islamic scholars, especially the old ones, agree that this is how it is. And this is again, empower my argument that the more you go far from Muhammad time, the more Muslims try to hide in the interpretation what it says especially it says there actually even if we go to Ajalalain hold on look at this he found near it people who live there he found near that water people who live there he found near where the sunset people live there if we go back to the verse just to show, show you how silly the Muslims tr trying to defend the Quran it says until he reached the city in the place of the sun. Who is the one is talking? Allah. Allah said, they are asking you about Dhul Qurnayn. Say, I shall recite to you or read or tell you about him. Some of his story. And then he said, till, till when he reached 
the sitting place of the sun. It is not Zulqurnayn saying until I reach. It is Allah saying till he reached. Do you see it, guys? People, do you see what I'm talking about? If the verse does not mean that really he found the sun sitting place, then why Allah, not the, not the man saying, till when he reached the sitting place of the sun? Ooh, hold on. There is no way to reach the sitting place of the sun unless there is a sitting place for the sun. Correct? It's not the guy saying that until I reach a place I thought, or it is, it is Allah now talking, saying, till when he reached the sitting place of the sun, and he found it. The one is talking still is Allah. Until now, the guy did not even talk. Do I need to go to anywhere to find where the sun set? The sun sets everywhere. Do we agree, guys? The sun set everywhere. So what the Quran talking about here that he have a discovery. He found where the sun set. Otherwise, everybody have the sun set in his home. You do not need to go anywhere. You can sit in your ass and stay in home and look from your window and you will see the sunset. I do not need to go to China. I do not need to go to Brazil. I do not need to go to, to, to Asia to see where the sun set. It is set everywhere. Who is the one saying, till when he reached the, sun, the sitting place of the sun? It's Allah. Do you see, guys, how we get them busted? And we are not done yet. We have even more horrible news for the Abdul. As usual, their prophet, he cannot stop talking and making poo-poo. So Muhammad, he decided to help Christian prince to get them busted. Thank you, Muhammad, for being my helper. This is Muhammad himself. This is who? This is Muhammad himself. This is not Ajalalain. This is not Ibn Kathir. This is not Fufu. This is not Mimi. This is not Mimi uh, Burka. This is Muhammad. Saying, I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah who was riding his donkey while the sun was sitting. And now Muhammad decide to expose his identity that he is a scientist. He worked for NASA. But in this case, NASA of Allah. So he said, who said that? Don't tell me now, Muhammad, he thought. Don't tell me that you Muslim, do you know the Quran meaning more than your prophet? Look what Muhammad, he said. He asked, do you know, do you know where this set? Talking about the sun. I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. He said, it's set in a spring of warm water. Do you see Muhammad saying that this is how he thought? Unless you want to say to me that Muhammad himself do not know what Allah he meant in his Quran and you Muslims, you know better. So please, for the sake of the hot spring water, stop lying and defending the fool. Defending the fool will make you look, should I say fooler? I don't know if that's correct in the English. Uh, so somebody uh, sent me this picture. Uh, I think this is made by the opposite prophet because I think this is his icon. So this is the prophet. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so, you know, you can do as much as you want. You can try your best. 
you can try to fool people you can you can do whatever use your imaginary it says oh it does not mean that it's mean imaginary thing he's he thought it doesn't say that even your prophet he confirmed he confirmed that this is exactly what the Quran is saying unless you want to say to me that your prophet was really a stupid idiot who do not know what he's talking about and you Muslims are the one who can explain the Quran and the me of the Quran Muhammad he cannot and by the way you cannot say to me that this is Daif you remember the the joke of Daif Daif anything is embarrassing they say it is Daif by the way Daif is still accepted so the the gentleman who sent me a message in Skype calling me names, I still I call him gentleman, hoping he will leave Islam after this video. Why you are saying to me I'm lying? You just said and you just admitted that Muhammad is a liar too. Because it's your prophet who said that. Do we have any Muslim who have the courage and the knowledge to give me a call? Anyone? By the way, uh, some some of you, I saw your comment saying that Abbas, uh, the guy who calls us from time to time, he sounds like a decent man. I have to tell you that Abbas is not a decent at all. He's a big fat liar. He's a big fat liar. But what he do, he played dumb. You know what played dumb? Uh, let me play stupid. Let me play, I do not know. Like here, he sent me a message here in this. Uh, CP, the objective of 929 is to pay jizya, not killing or conversion. Please don't make up things. He j Look what he said. The objective on 929 is to pay jizya. When the verse saying, kill the Christians, kill the Jews until the pages here. So he just admitted that he's a prophet, is a gang leader, he wants your money. You pay, you live. But is it the, really the objective? No, the objective is to humiliate the Christian for they are not choosing to embrace Islam. All of them, they are liars. Because this is the only way you can stay as a Muslim defending Islam by lying. If you are honest for a second, you are in trouble. The objective of fighting the Christians is to pay the jizya. Is that the objective? What does that mean? Your prophet is a thief. I can stay not to believe on Allah as long as I pay him. Fight against such of those who have been given the scriptures, the Jews and the Christians, as believe not in Allah or the last day. So the reason is they don't believe in Allah or the last day. And by the way, this is confirmed the lies of the Muslims to be lies because they say to us that the Christian in the time of the Prophet, they believe in Allah too. It says in the front of you because they don't believe in Allah or the last day, which means they don't believe in Allah, the God of Islam, and they do not believe in the last day of Islam. They believe in the God of Christianity, Yeshua, Yeshua al Messiah, and the judgment day when the Messiah will come, but we don't believe in the cult of Islam and their God. And here it's explained to you why the Muslims should kill them. Fight here is not fighting by shoes or sandals, is fighting by sword, which means kill them unless they pay the jizya. And you have to pay the jizya with humiliation. Why? Simply because you choose not to embrace Islam. You know, you can get better translation from their biggest scam, Ibn Kathir, where he explained 
why a Muslim should humiliate every Christian he see in the road because simply this is the way of life in Islam a Muslim he should humiliate anyone is not a Muslim even after they pay the jizya still you have to humiliate them pay the jizya they earned from the people of the book continue what does that mean fight against those who believe in Allah etc etc until they pay the jizya with willingness submission and feel themselves subdued therefore when the people of the scriptures believe disbelieve in Muhammad what happened when the people of the scriptures disbelieve in Muhammad they had no beneficial faith in any messenger or what the messenger brought rather they followed their own religion because this is confirmed with their idea lost so because we did not believe in Muhammad because we disbelieve in Allah and his religion Muhammad he says fight against them those who don't believe in Muhammad and then here it says and those who acknowledge not the religion of truth which is supposedly Islam you are right among the people of the scriptures Christians and Jews this honorable ayah was revealed with the order to fight the people of the book after the pagans were defeated so now Muhammad he have time to kill the rest Muhammad you look around him who left he killed the people of Quraysh or the one who opposed him and now there's nobody nobody except the Christian and the Jews and when he became victorious and there's actually a chapter in the Quran so it's called the chapter of Al-Fatih when he when he became victorious people they enter Islam by waves why they enter Islam by waves because they are afraid to die by waves not by like a thousand two thousands no by waves because the whole point is live or die they did not enter Islam until Muhammad became victorious people waited for the last second re refusing to enter Islam but when the victory come victory of what victory of war people they enter into Islam by like troops like tens of thousands cities counties countries because people want to live and this is the method of Muhammad in order to force people to convert to Islam is either kill them in the case of the Christians and the Jews he said to himself actually a very smart idea the reason by the way Muhammad he come with this uh, uh, jizya thing uh, the Muslim they were afraid after Muhammad he killed all the, the 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 businessmen who they are in Mecca and around Mecca and most of the rich people they flee for their life the one who have money always the first one to flee the poor where he will go he can't even afford to travel because of that Muhammad he come by the advice of Amr al-Khattab let us fight the Jews and the Christians who have a lot of money and force them to pay us money and income and if they do we will have a good nice life doing no job and they work for us for the rest of their life
Actually, we can support that from the Quran and prove it. If you go in the Quran, the yellow pages of Muhammad, the search engine is really horrible. I don't know what's wrong with it. All right. Let us go. If you are afraid from being or getting poor or starving, because now we killed all those who uh, make money, support us, etc. So what we will do, you know, how we can really support those Muslims, how the Muslim can support themselves. How the Muslims can live after this? They are people who have no job. They are fighter to kill. They like to kill, and they live for killing. So how we can support them? I see there is a Muslim here trying to contact me. Call me, Abdul. I just added you. Give me a call. No? Okay. If you go in the Quran, my friend, the one who is saying, well, like how we know that this is what the verses are, like uh, they, they meant to talk about, that it's about money. The purpose of this war is about money. The guy whose name is Abbas, he just said, the purpose of this attack is to pay the money. And actually, if you read the verses before it, it says that too. Read it carefully. If you fear poverty from the lose of the merchandise, their merchandise, what their merchandise? Merchandise of those who used to do business and Muhammad, he killed them. So now we have no business. Mecca became a ghost town. Allah will reach you. How? The verse after it says, go and fight the Christian and the Jews and pay, make them pay money. Is it clear? People, isn't it clear? The verse before is saying, if you fear that you will be poor because of the merchandise of those who you kill them and they are not doing business no more in Mecca, well, if you fear to lose and you have no more income, don't worry, Allah will reach you. And right away after that, he says, go and kill the Christian and the Jews unless they pay you money. How clear we can make it more than this and actually this is where the mafia and money protection coming from when the Muslims occupy a part of Italy like Sicily 
and then they've been kicked out. The criminals, they learn from the Muslims how to force people to pay money to live. And this is where the mafia business started. My friend, there is nothing is called somebody who sounds nice and somebody sounds satanic. Anyone believe in Satan, he is satanic. And this is satanic. To say to people, go kill somebody, kill people, and then the town became empty from all those who do business. And now we say to them, okay, you are afraid that you will be poor? Go and attack the Christians and take their money. Attack the Jews and force them to pay money. They are, they are rich, they have money. So they might try to lie to you and try to fool you. And don't don't let the Muslims fool you by saying he this guy he sound nice. Actually, the nice the nicer one is the sneaky. Is the most dangerous because he was able already to fool you that I am nice. What kind of a person is nice? He believe in this garbage that he should have to kill me and force me to pay jizya. How nice he is! How even you convince yourself that he's nice. Imagine you say Christian Prince is nice and he believe he is going to rape my wife. He's very nice. I mean, isn't it? This is very silly. There's a guy who believe in raping your wife, kidnapping your children, take them as slaves and killing you and taking your house and your home and your town. And yet you say he's nice. You must be certified silly. Do we have any brave Muslim would like to call us? Am I heard, guys? Is my voice coming clear? As you see, they try to defend by fooling you. You as a Christian, always you should arm yourself with the word of God. And the word of God will, will keep you really uh, away from being silly and stupid. Be aware of false prophets who will come to you in a clothes of a sheep, but in fact they are wolves. And yet you see a Christian, naive Christian, saying, oh, this Abdul, he sounds nice. <laughs> so what we learn from the Bible then? Muslims, they practice two things. Aggressive when they can. Or aggression and kindness when they cannot be aggressive what does that mean when they can conquer you you see a Muslim will not be debating me about Muhammad is a prophet or not he will be, bring me and he will chop my head you like it you don't like it Muhammad is a prophet so now why the Muslims are talking to us about trying to prove that Muhammad is a prophet because simply they cannot do the first ch choice which is in the front of us in the Quran Kill the Christians and the Jews who don't believe in Allah. This is what the verse is saying. You see the word fight here is coming from the word This is qatilu. In Arabic, it's not, it's not fight. You see, because you can fight maybe by somebody you fight with your wife, right? English use the same word. In Arabic, no. Qatilu is coming from the word qatala, which means kill, kill. So here, kill those who do not believe in Allah. Not fight those. In other way, fight to kill. When we speak to people like uh, Dr. Ruhi, the other sheikh, all of them believe in killing us. That's the fact. You will not find a Muslim, he says, I don't agree with this verse. 
unless he became an apostate. So don't make them fool you. Unless you like to be a fool. Do we have any brave Muslim would like to give me a call? Someone saying, Jesus says, love your enemy. Yeah, loving my enemy does not mean give them a hug. Loving my enemy is spanking them, exposing what they believe to be false so I can save them. The same Jesus we talk about is the same one who flipped the tables of those who they made the temple of God, the house of his father, a place for buying and selling. He did not give them hugs. So loving people is about by correcting them, not about giving kisses. If somebody he loves you, he don't act hypocrite with you. You can't be loving people and you are hypocrite. You say to them you are right when they are wrong. That's hypocrisy and this is not love. This is satanic. And Islam is religion who teach hypocrisy and teach satanic lifestyle. And we can prove it very easy. This is... Again, the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. Chapter 3, verse number 28. The chapter of the Taqiyah. Have you ever heard of a cult like this? This cult teach in many chapters, like 551, 923. In 923, it says even you cannot take somebody as a friend if he is, even if he's your father or your brother from your family, your blood. If they are not Muslims, but look at this one here. Here it's a warning for the Muslims. If you take someone he is not a Muslim as a friend, for whoever does that, does what? Take non believers as friends. If you do that, you have a problem. What is the problem? You are considered to be apostate. The one who is sincere to take non-Muslims as a friend by seeking might and honor, by taking the hypocrites and the disbelievers, supposedly we are the hypocrite. Look at this, look at the Satan. He is teaching the Muslims to be hypocrite and yet he call us hypocrites as a friend. So if a Muslim, he take you as a friend for read, look what it says. He has no connection with Allah, which means he became an apostate. He has no honor, which mean Muslims are allowed to demolish him. Mercy or protection, they can kill him and kidnap his woman and rape her and take his child as a slave. From Allah, unless it be, there's exception. When you can take non-Muslim as a friend, unless it be, you guard yourself from them. Save yourself from them as it were security. Saving yourself from them by speaking in a friendly way toward them with while your heart is like this. Have you ever heard of a satanic cult more than this ugly? The God of Islam saying to the Muslims, you cannot be nice and you cannot be friend with the Christians, the Jews, the Hindus, the Buddhas, unless, unless you are playing a game, taqiyya. You speak a friendly, saying we are friends. I love a Christians. I have a friends. They are a Christian, brother. Brother, I have many friends. They are Christians and they are Jewish and they are Hindu, brother. But in your heart, it should be the opposite. This is the only way you can take them as a friend. And the funny, the filthy devil, he call us hypocrites when he is the one who is teaching the Muslims to be hypocrite. 
And look how this contradict what the Bible teach and what Jesus brought to us. The, the Bible even forbid us from taking an oath, even if it's truthful. Yea, yea, or nay, nay. And anything addition is from the devil. While Jesus is teaching us to be always truthful, not only when you want to take an oath, because usually people rely 10, 24 hours, and then to prove to you that they are honest or telling the truth, they take an oath. And who is going to believe somebody is liar 24 hours a day, and now he want to take an oath anyway? I mean, if you care for God, why are you lying anyway? Imagine I bring a kid or a rapist and I say to him, swear you did not rape her. If you swear, I will let you go. He will be happy to, 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 to rape and kill every day and swear and then he let go. That is the truth about this cult. Never believe a Muslim explaining the Quran or Islam to you for many reasons. Number one, they are ignorant idiots, do not know even their cult. Number two, in the best scenario, even the one who knows, he will try to lie to you his best. And lying is a permitted. There's a video on YouTube. Uh, Translated by Memory TV, I think you know this uh, channel. The Muslim guy, he was a sheikh. He's a sheikh. He is proud about a Muslim who was able to convert a Jew to Islam. And this is how the conversation is. There's a guy. I don't believe even the story is true. But this is what the Muslim is saying. The Muslims always, they, they fabricate stories just to come with it, to, to, make, uh, to make audience. There's a guy, he's a Jew, he is, his neighbor is a Muslim. And this Muslim keep asking him to convert to Islam. The Jew one day he said to him, well, you know what, I like to convert to Islam, but I like to drink and I like to smoke. The Muslim, he said to him, who said to you, you cannot do that? The guy, he said, really? He said, yeah, you can smoke and drink. He said, drink like alcohol? He said, yeah. And the guy, he said, okay, I will take shahada. The Muslim, he said to him, okay, repeat after me. And the guy who took shahada, and now the Muslim, he said to me, said to him, listen. And remember, the sheikh is reporting the story. Listen, now you became a Muslim. You cannot drink anymore. He said, but you just told me I can. He said, yeah, I told you five minutes ago because at that time you are not a Muslim. And now the sheikh, he is proud about the Muslim who deceived this poor Jew, saying to him, you can. You see, you see how they, they are proud about it? They, they are bragging about it. Right? That is Islam. Who want to believe in such a garbage? Who is going to believe in such a garbage? Any Abdul? Any Abdul? I cannot wait to go to the heaven of Allah and get all the versions. Additional proof that Islam is a stupid cult trying to tempt us in by what is between our legs it's not only disgusting 
it's showing us the level of this religion and the level of this God you see if you have occasion let us say today is your birthday me myself I never celebrate a birthday but let us say you have a birthday and you have a friends come into your house one he gave you a book about science he likes science the other one he gave you a chocolate he liked chocolate the other one he brought cake the other one he brought brought I mean you have many friends and one of them he come to you with porno tape what do you think about the gift and the one who gave the gift What if somebody says to you, I want to give you a gift for your birthday, a woman with nice boobs? What do you think about the gift and the one who gave the gift? Is he a holy man? Is he a person who really a decent person? Is he perverted? What, what do you think he is? The gift always present the person who gave the gift, his personality his thought, his ideas, his way of life. Do we agree? His taste of life. What is his best for him? If Allah is not a satanic God, why he is trying to seduce me by big breast? Why he don't say a woman you will love her? I mean, why you need to tell me the size of her breast? Why you need to describe to me what is inside her vagina? Did God say to Adam, I'm going to create for you a virgin. Her name is Eve. She has big breast, a nice ass. If you look at the promises of the Quran and the promises of Muhammad about having women for sex in heaven, you will notice that Muhammad do not really care for anything except sex. There's no love there. We prayed, I mean, we, we played before, even yesterday, the videos about Muslims speaking about heaven. Maybe we should play it again just to refresh the memory of those, or maybe some people never saw it before. Let us see. Don't take me wrong, please. You know, I, I have not I don't know you. you. Okay. No, I'm not trying to insult. If that can you can you yes. can have sex with your mother. Okay. Yes. Well, okay. So you can have, you are proud about having sin in heaven. Thank you very much. Voice. What do you want to say to us, Mr. Yes. Russ? Why well, you are upset? You say you, 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 you said you said this Nothing guy is, is a fraud. Sin in heaven. Huh? Nothing is sin in heaven. Thank you very much. That's what I'm saying. In the heaven you can have sex with the goat. It's fine for you, right? Not nothing sin. There's no nothing sin. You can sin. you yes. can have sex with your mother. Okay. Yes. Well, okay. So you can have you are proud about having sex with your mother. You and your father, you will have sex with the same woman, which is your mother. Anything Anything is fun. Everything comes from God in heaven. No problem. So in the heaven of Allah, you will have a threesome, you and your father and your mother in the bed. Okay. And you don't see that there's something wrong with that. What do you not understand about nothing is sin? Well, I, sin I, I'm just trying to understand, my friend. You see, I'm not smart like you. Nothing is sin. Nothing is sin. Every Muslim believe that in the heaven of Allah, nothing is sin which mean when you enter the door of the it's called so-called islamic heaven you drop your morality outside forget about it here nothing is sin 
you have sex with your mother, you have sex with your father, you have sex with a man, you have sex with a child. You have, it doesn't matter. You you have nothing to worry about when it's called sin. Isn't it obvious that this is from the devil? Sex with the mother. And he is saying to me, there is no sin in heaven. Why you don't understand? I mean, Christian Prince, why you are being stupid? You say this Nothing guy is a fraud. Nothing is sin in heaven. Huh? Nothing is sin in heaven. Thank you very much. That's what I'm saying. In heaven, you can have sex with the goat. It's fine for you, right? Not nothing sin. There's no nothing sin. You can sin. you yes. can have sex with your mother. Okay. Yes. Well, okay. So you can. Have, you are proud about having sex with your mother. You and your father, you will have sex with the same woman, which is your mother. Anything. Anything is fun. Everything comes from God in heaven. No problem. So in the heaven of Allah, you will have a threesome, you and your father and your mother in the bed. Okay. And you don't see that there's something wrong with that. What do you not understand about nothing is sin? Well, I, sin I, I'm just trying to understand, my friend. You see, I'm not smart like you. We think it's sin due to our social okay. structure. If, if, the, if Zach and Mike, I'm not trying to insult, by the way. I'm not trying to insult. Don't take me wrong, please. You know, I, I have not, I don't know you. you. Okay. No, I'm not trying to insult. If Zach and Naik, he want to have sex with your sister and you like your sister. So are you willing you and Zach and Naik to have share, to share your sister together? In this case, Zach and Naik mm. in heaven, mm. he would have a situation in which he could. He could. So you and your sister and you Zach and Naik in one bed. But it, it wouldn't be my, it would be, it wouldn't be my sister. Why not? In heaven. Think of it as anything can happen. Well, anything can happen. So your sister, it's possible that you and Zach and Nick having sex with your sister in the same time. That's amazing pleasure. I mean, what they can say. This is beautiful, my friend. I'm really in touch. I've, I'm thinking now to convert to Islam. And can you tell me what is the wisdom behind this? Why? Why you, your sister and Zach and Nick and you in the bed and you don't see that there's something wrong with that? Why do you think there's no, nothing wrong with that? Look, okay. I, due, due to our social like structure and mm. morals, yes, mm. it's wrong. Mm. But when you get to heaven, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Hey guys, any, how many of you is downloading those videos? Please six, uh, search, search for sex in paradise in Islam or sex in heaven. And you will find there's more than one Muslim. They spoke about it. And all of them, they agree in the same thing. Download them, share them, please. Because this is very important to expose this stupid cult from the mouth of the Muslims. Here, I want to mention something which is very important. When Muhammad, he promised men a lot of sex. A simpler question would be, what is sex without love? You will notice that Muhammad is speaking about you having sex with women you never met. Even women, they are imported from hellfire because they are hookers. Even the Quran says that in the heaven of Allah, women, they will be taken off from them their jealousy. So, which means they will not become emotional or a human anymore. They are Barbies for sex. How disgusting, how evil is that? Allah promising the Muslim, don't worry in the heaven, those women, they will not have any jealousy and they will not give you a headache. Oh, you stuck with this woman before me. Oh, you kissed her more. No, 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 no. All of them, they will be fighting over you to have sex with you. But none of them in love with you and you are not in love with any of them. You never met them and they don't even have names. They call them whore. What kind of a filthy cult this cult is? Who promised me a penis will never go sleep? Who promised me women who have nice breast and nice vagina imported from heaven? And I do not know them. I do not love them. I never met them before. They never met me before. It is a destiny. So Allah, he made them to be my sex toys so I can enjoy sex, but there's no love. There's lust. How this can be from God? 
how any human being can accept such a thing. You sleep with the women just because she is a woman, and the women she sleep with you because you are just a man. It's not really uh, hard to figure out that this is nothing but animal relationship, not a human no more. Humanity is not there. In English, they say you are making love, not making sex. Islam is all about sex, for love is not involved. And this is why Muhammad in the whole Quran never says, love your wife. Instead of his saying, replace them as much as you want. And not only that, and the Quran saying that if you cannot afford to have two and a three and four to if them, then you go for one, which means the last chance is to have one because you are poor. You start with two packages. They come in packages. You take two, you take three, you take four. And if you cannot afford it, then goes for one. And by the way, I believe strongly that this verse never meant to have sex with four women. I believe strongly that this verse says you can have sex with up to nine. Because the Arabic is so clear. It says, Mathna wathulath waraba, not or, 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 as they say to you in the text, in the translation. You see, in the translation, they say, two or three it doesn't say or anyone who speak arabic it says mathna wa which equal to and and the three two and the three and four and that explain why the earlier muslims they have up to nine wives actually even the muslim they say to us that muhammad himself he have nine wives in the same time in certain time and then that he jumped like for 11 and after he made a verse for him that he have no limit. He, he have a privilege of how many he can have. So go and if not to marry, by the way, the translation here says. Marry, it doesn't say that. Nowhere in the verse says marry. It says if, if those women to if them. If women of your choice, two and three and four, and if you feel you cannot be justice, which means you cannot afford it to so many to spend money, go for only one. And here they add, or the captive, that's a lie too, doesn't say or. And the captive, all of them. If you have captives in Islam, it doesn't matter how many they are, you can have sex with all of them. Even if they are one million, two million, three million. God, He created Adam and Eve. And Eve, she is made from the same nature of Adam. To be one together. And this is what the Bible teaches. The man and the women, they leave their parents and they became a chad. They became one, united. So while Christianity teach that marriage between a man and a woman is something real, it's unity. It's not sexual relationship. Yes, it's involving sexual relationship. That's very normal. But it's not about sex. It's about unity, unity of love. And this is why the Messiah, he ordered the man to love his wife. Why the Quran, we don't see where the word love is. You have to love your wife the same as the Messiah, he loved the church. Not you have to sleep with, the, with your wife. You love your wife. Love have to come first. 
and you have to sacrifice yourself to your family the same as the Messiah he sacrificed to the church and the Messiah here he made the women as if she is our church so we cannot compare between the faith of Islam and how it describes sexuality and as we see I mean they go beyond satanic teaching you see you speak to somebody who's an atheist you ask him do you have sex with your mother he say no this is wrong even an atheist he will not do it a Muslim he have no problem to have sex with his mother as long it's in heaven nothing is sin in heaven thank you very much that's what i'm saying in heaven you can have sex with the goat it's fine for you right not nothing sin there's no nothing sin you can sin. you yes. can have sex with your mother okay yes well, okay so you can have you are proud about having sex with your mother you and your father you will have sex with the same woman which is your mother anything anything is fun everything comes from god in heaven no problem so in the heaven of allah you will have a threesome you and your father and your mother in the bed okay and you and the funny they say to you do you know that story of Lut in the old testament where his two daughters they have sex with their father well there two women they have sex with their daughter is not god he said to them do that is not god who guide them to do that the bible reporting a story about what those women they did it is your god now teaching you that you can have sex with your parents and your daughter If this is not satanic, what is satanic? And look, this guy, uh, Abbas, he can prove that there's no kingdom of God. <laughs> Abdul, don't forget to tell me about the donkey who took your prophet to the 7 11 heaven. And each time he arrived to the, go the kingdom of Allah, he found guards and they are guarding the gate. And they ask him from behind the gate, who is this? I mean, have you ever heard of an angel do not know who is behind the door? Can't Allah install a security camera? Can't he buy a software from Israel? Face recognition? Angels of Allah, they are asking Muhammad and the angel Jibreel, the angel Jibreel with him, the, the head of the angel supposedly, he, they are asking, who is this? He says, Jibreel. They say, who is with you? They say, Muhammad. They say, is he cold? He say, yes. The guards, they have no idea. They cannot even recognize Jibreel. And you are telling me about the kingdom of God, you fool? You better be busy with your shit. Excuse my language. Angels of God, they do not know if this is Muhammad or not. They do not know if this is Jibreel or not. This must be a true story. And instead of him being upset that he will have sex with his mother, I will prove to you that there is no kingdom of God in the Bible. You are right. You became the joke of everybody in YouTube. This poor idiot, each time he call me, he gets spanked until he there's no Vaseline can fix it. Is that right? <laughs> That argument here, and I will Can I respond right to that? Okay, okay. So, you Christian Prince because give you a chance. He a me all, all the time. A yeah. Christian Prince give you a chance, okay, yeah. to deal with him through what was that Skype or phone? Yeah. Skype or phone? Yeah. He, he did not only butcher you. I was in that program for ten minutes. I'm sorry to say. He did not only butcher you, he made barbecue from you, and then he gave you out and sold you out for people to eat from that barbecue.
the kill. But your still, opinion, your opinion. Still, you stand up yes, and then say that's your opinion. What is between yes, you something. and Christian Brands? It is that. But as a Christian, let me finish. Let me finish. As a Christian, my brother and I concern that before. we don't want to. We don't want to have a barbecue. Day after day, every time when you go to the Christian France program, it is sad to see because we concern for you. He's gonna butcher you again. He's gonna butcher you again. And one day, from the shame you brought to the Darwatin, you are not gonna able to come to speakers corner. That makes one less Muslim at the corner, you're and, and that's not very really good. Can I say something now? You're sure. on and on. Yeah. Now you made, so on and on you made, and on. You made a lot of claims right now that Christian Prince butchered me. Yes, now, he did. I am saying to you. <laughs> you you did email me. <laughs> Didn't you email me? Why don't you tell her be a lady? You're telling me be a gentleman. Talk why to me. Talk to me, brother. No, you're telling me, why not telling her to be a lady? Abbas, it's getting embarrassing. Yes, it is. Just, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you you know, 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 you you I'm going to sleep without my socks today. Every person who called me, his video is out online. Go and watch them and listen what happened to the Abdul when they called me. You see, I am a person who encourage everybody to download my videos, including the Muslims. For a very simple reason. We are always victorious. And because of Islam, you are you look so dummy. Very embarrassing. And actually, this is why this video today, I name it after a long chat with a Christian prince. I have chosen to leave Islam because simply it's not a Christian prince, he may leave Islam, it's how stupid Islam is. When you defend something stupid, you will look so stupid and people will laugh at you. That is reality. I will try to come back on air again after a few hours. Uh, I will try to do that, maybe. We will see. We have a very strong snowstorm here. I mean, I don't know when this winter will be over. <sighs> I'm going to ask Allah to make me won the lotto. And then I will buy a corner lot in the heaven of Allah and 72 horny version waiting for me in the swimming pool, which is full of milk and yogurt, as Allah said in the Quran. I like yogurt. A river of milk, a river of wine in the heaven of Allah, brother. There's no faucet for the wine. There's a river, river. Brother, it's haram to drink wine, brother. But in the heaven of Allah, we have a river of wine, brother. River of wine. Are you sure? Why not? A yogurt is full of uh, acid, uh, acid uh, you know, is going to clean you very well. <laughs> Especially if you are an Arab like me, brother. Last time I took a shower, it was like a century ago. I mean, this religion is the most stupid cult ever. Brother, drinking wine, brother, is sin, brother. And you, you will not believe it how Muhammad was teaching them how to make wine. But let me tell you why Muhammad, he came with the idea of forbidding the drinking. Because it was very embarrassing. All his followers are a bunch of criminals and they are drunk 24 hours, seven days a week. To the point when they pray, people, they were making fun of them. They were drunk. The whole mosque is a drunk. <laughs> so Muhammad, he made this verse for the Muslims. Look what the verse saying. Oh, you believe. <laughs> Pray not when you are drunken. What in the heck? Pray not when you are drunken. Why? Allah is saying to the Muslim, Pray not when you are drunken. This is telling us that all of them, they are drunk people. 
The whole congregation in the mosque, they are drunk. Take a beer, brother. Take a beer, brother. A brother, yesterday I saw the moon coming down to the earth. I swear by Allah. And I saw the moon being split. Two pieces. A brother, I saw that too after I drank two beer. Brother, what is beer? A brother, it's the same as camel urine, especially when it is hot and not gold. People are praying and they are totally drunk. This is religion. Why Jesus did not say to his apostle, don't, close, don't pray when you are drunk? Why would you not see this case? What kind of a prophet, what kind of followers, all of them, they are a bunch of drunk men around him. And Muhammad himself was a drunk man. And now we understand where tech, take a beer is coming from. It's not really take a beer, it is take a beer. Maybe in coming videos we can show you how Muhammad even was teaching Abdul how to make wine. And he used to drink four days a week. Four days a week. The guy, he was a drunk man. So what Muhammad he did, because this is embarrassing, he forbid it here. He said to them, can't you wait until we go to heaven? We have a river of wine there. <laughs> hey, brother, we have a river of wine there, brother. A river free, for free. You drink as much as you want. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right. Uh, hmm. I wish I have a camera at that time and I open my live streaming in YouTube. The prophet and the believers are falling apart because they are drunk. <laughs> Brother, did the prophet start the prayer or not yet? Uh, I don't know, brother. I think the prayer started. <laughs> brother, why the prophet look like he is moving like a tree in a hurricane? Brother, I don't know. I think it is windy, maybe. <laughs> a bunch of drunken people behind the prophet and Allah himself now making a verse says, pray not when you are drunk. Allah himself. And what make it more funny, look what Allah, he said in the Quran. Allah, he claimed that the wine making you drunk is a miracle from Allah. It's a miracle. You say Allah don't have a miracle. Read with me. Brother, read with me. How the wine can make you drunk? It's a miracle. And of the fruit of the date palm and the grapes. Once you're drinking strong drink, it doesn't say strong drink, you liar. It says alcohol. Sakaran, which means alcohol make you drunk. And also good nourishment. Allah praising the alcohol here. Therein is deed is a portent of the people who have sense, it's a miracle from Allah. This is a sign from Allah. And the, you know, the translation is really funny. Let's, let us change the translation. This is Big Ta. Let us see another certified donkey. And from the fruit of the date, palm, and the vine, you get a wholesome drink. Wholesome drink, may Allah wholesome you. Why you don't say alcohol, you liar? Why you don't say alcohol? Ah, wholesome, huh? And now I am really sick of your wholesome and threesome. It's time to get you busted. Let us see this guy. In a irritating drink? I mean, I am seeing translation which is really beyond imagination. What is that? In a, a what? 
change, change this guy. Let us see a different guy. <laughs> okay, let us see Hilali Khan. Hilali Khan. Ah, Hilali Khan is being more honest. Hilali Khan from Pakistan. Aman, Rabbi Aman. Pakistani Muslim is more honest these days. Look what Khan he said, the brother. He said, You drive a strong drink. This is was before the order of the probation of the alcoholic drink, brother. Hold on. So are you saying to me that Allah was praising alcohol and later he forbid alcohol? And by the way, still the translation is false. You see, he just admitted that this is about alcohol. But why did that put it there? Because it's there say sakaran, sakaran to make you drunk. In Arabic, it says sakaran. It doesn't say stronger drink. And here it says, and therein is indeed a sign for people who have wisdom. A brother, if you want to see one of the signs of Allah, go to the bar and see people are drinking and getting drunk. This is a sign from Allah. Take beer. Allah bragging about a miracle. He claim it is his miracle making you drunk. This is a sign from Allah. Hello? Hello? It's me who made you drunk. And then I will throw you in the trunk. And I will ship you for free. And the virgin waiting for you. Hello? Ta da 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 da. Pi da do da da wee. Quran is so crazy and you cannot tell me this is not from God. Hello. Allah. Ibrahim. Hey, brother, why Allah is praising the, the wine and alcohol and vodka, brother, and he claimed that this is a miracle from him, brother? Because, brother, it's very simple. You drink some fizz a drink and you get a drunk. If this is not a miracle, what is a miracle? A second ago, you were smart and you believed that shaitan, he played with your anus. After you drink, you don't believe in that no more. Obviously, it's a miracle, brother. So a Muslim, when he is awake and not a drunk, he believes shaitan will play with his anus, but after he gets drunk, he will not believe in that. So I prefer to be drunk and not to believe in such a stupid belief. Hello? Hmm. Any Abdul? And they lie to us and they say Quran and Islam consider, you know, uh, drunk. The God of Islam himself is praising alcohol and he is claiming that this is a miracle from him. Do we have any Abdul? May they, may they. Do we have any Abdul? No Abdul. All right, guys. I think I will, maybe, maybe, I'm not sure. It depends on how many drink I take. By the way, I don't really drink. I, I have a bottle of wine. I have it for more than a year, and I have still, I think, maybe more than a half of it. Actually, more than a year. What a year? I don't know when, when I have this thing. So, you see, what, what, you do not know about Islam is what Muslims don't want you to know. They give you things just to fool you. Islam is like a grave and they try to cover it by marble and they got the money. And they put all the beautiful marble in the top of the grave. But don't forget, a grave is a grave. You cover it by marble, you don't cover it by marble, it doesn't change anything. That it is a grave. And Islam is the grave of a human being. Let us see. Let us see. Hello, my friend, Christian friends.
Yes, my friend. How are you? Are you a Muslim? No, no. We had talked before. Uh, I'm from Russia, Ibrahim. Oh, okay. Yeah, you are an ex-Muslim, right? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. yes. We talked a few times before. Okay. Uh, Christian Prince, uh, I would like to invite you to my program, uh, if you don't mind, uh, because uh, I'm making video, as you know. Uh, I take some people, uh, Muslim people, uh, to my program. Mm. They every time try to change the meaning of uh, uh, verses, uh, because we are not Arab, we don't understand everything. Uh, even these people not Arab, but they are changing the meaning. Mm. That's why I want to invite my program okay. at, me, uh, you, as an Arab. Yeah, there is many, there is many people that invite me to be in their uh, YouTube, and mm -hmm. I don't really like to be like and the, the way people they do it. So if you want, mm -hmm. when you have your YouTube live, if somebody call you, I am live. You can call me. You can schedule oh, it at the same time. We are, and do not, it. we are not making a live program at the same time, different uh, time. Well, uh, what no, I just... can do, I mean, what what I can do, but you know, anyway. Uh, or you can ask me a question and then I answer it and then you can play my recording for them and you know, what I can do because there's many people they ask me to go to mm -hmm. their program and I said no you know because simply I don't like the way uh, those things are set up like uh, interview ask me questions etc I prefer a real thing a real debate so if you can schedule it what time you do mm -hmm. your, your your broadcast actually it is uh, with uh, Turkish time at 10 o'clock uh, in the evening but I don't know your time. 10 o'clock uh, in what time? In Turkey time? Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Well, actually, I am, I am always uh, almost in the same time. I mean, I start like uh, sometime at 3 p.m., you know, and that, mm -hmm. would be, that would be fine for Turkey. Why not? Mm. I mean, you know, you can, you can still do it. No, you know why I want to come? Because, uh, you know, uh, Arabic and you're Arab. You know this. Uh, I, I understand, I understand. My friend, you don't need to explain. But uh, for mm -hmm. me, uh, when I go live on air, you can call me. You can make your program with the time I do. And actually, many times I do it even in the very early. You know, I don't have really a fixed time. Like even yesterday, I did the program around 2.30 a.m. in the morning, which means it was maybe 8, 9, 10 in your time, you know? So in the morning, you know? So mm -hmm. still you can call me. If you see me on air and it's, it, the time is fit for you, Open your program and do live broadcast. And if a Muslim call you, you want him to get busted, call me. Tell me. Just text me first. Tell me I have a Muslim on the line. You know, I want you to explain something to him. And you just give, give me a call. All right? Okay. Okay. Uh, I have a question, if you don't mind. No, no, not today. That is uh, because I get, I, get, I get to go for now. Maybe later, if I come on air, you can call me again. All right? Okay. Thank you, my, friend. Right, my friend. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye -bye. Take care. <clears throat> because if I accept your invitation, I have to accept the others, and I receive tons of them. You know, I did uh, uh, with the, what his name, the apostate prophet, because many of you asked me to go. You know, but actually, I don't like this kind of. Uh, you know, I mean, always I prefer to do things by my own, by myself. I do not need anyone to be by my side, and they don't need me too. So. There's no point of having two people speaking about, you know, I prefer to have a real debate with real Abdul so we can have fun. Right? Barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody sent me an image of Muhammad Hijab. <laughs> and he have this in his T-shirt. <laughs> You guys, you people are really crazy. <laughs> I mean, who is this guy who come with this idea? Allah praise for Muhammad, for Muhammad. That's a good one. Anyway, all right, guys. I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you soon again, Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And we prove it every day. And nobody can prove us wrong. Thank you and take care. God bless.